One of the big hits from Gen Con 2023 was Oink Games' Tiger and Dragon. Now, I wasn't at Gen Con this year, but I did manage to borrow a copy from a friend. So here's the Board Game Guys Tiger and Dragon tutorial. Before I begin, big thanks to my friend Jim Zub for introducing me to this game and lending me his copy for this video. Jim's a longtime friend, a gamer, and a comic book creator. Look for his work on Wayward, Skull Kickers, Conan, Murder World, and many, many more. Now, on to the game. Tiger and Dragon is an abstraction of a fight in a martial arts dojo from their hand to launch or block attacks in an effort to be the first player to play all of their tiles. The winner of the round will earn varying amounts of points based on what tile they played last, and the first player to achieve 10 points wins the game. Let's get the game set up. Each player needs a player board. Create a supply of the victory point chips and turn all the tiles face down in the center of the play area and give them a wash. That's the tile equivalent of shuffling cards. Then each player takes a number of tiles from the center based on player count. With five players, you each take seven tiles. With four players, you each take nine tiles. With three players, you'll take 11 tiles each. And with just two of you, you'll take 13 tiles apiece. Depending on player count, a different amount of tiles will be left over. Pick a start player and give them the start token. That's the one with the flame and the plus one on it. They also take an extra tile from the supply. The start player position will belong to the person who won the previous round in all future rounds. Pick one of the scoring cards to use. Battle at the Dojo is the default scoring card, but there are several others to choose from that add variety to gameplay. The tiles come in eight numerical values, one through eight, with two wilds, the blue tiger and the red dragon. Even-numbered tiles are blue and odd-numbered tiles are red. The number on the tiles is also the number of that tile, so there are eight eights, but there's only one one. The battle begins. The start player chooses a tile from their hand and places it face up on the fire space, that is the leftmost space of the top row. This is their attack row. Whatever number they play here is the attack, and the next player in clockwise order must play a matching number into their defense row to block it. If they cannot, they pass, and now the next player must defend against that first player's attack, and so on around the table. One of two things is going to happen. Either, number one, a player successfully defends the attack, or, number two, no one defends the attack, and the action gets all the way back to the attacking player. If one of the players defends against the initial attack by playing a matching tile, then the attack is stopped, and the player who stopped it becomes the new attacker. They play an attack tile into the first empty slot of their attack row, and see if anyone can block it. If no one can defend against the attack and the action returns to the attacker, the attacker gets to play one of their tiles face down into the first empty slot of their defense row and then start a new attack by playing a face up tile into the first empty slot of their attack row. Continue doing this until someone has played their final tile onto their board. It can be either as an attack or a defense, but if it is your final tile, then the round is over and it's time to score. Wild tiles. There are two wild tiles in the game, the red dragon and the blue tiger. These can be used to block an attack of the corresponding color. So the tiger can block any even numbered attack and the dragon can block any odd numbered attack. Technically, you can launch an attack with either the tiger or the dragon, but since they have no number, they can be blocked by any tile of the same color. Now scoring. How many points you earn will be based on which scoring card you used and which tile was your final play. Remember, only the player who goes out, that is plays all of their tiles, scores any points. Every scoring card in the game scores you 10 points and an instant victory if your final play is the one tile. 
as a unique number, the one cannot be blocked. So you're probably going to want to use it earlier in the round to get a free face down play. But if you hold off and use it last, you will win the game immediately. Another scoring rule that's the same across all scorecards is that every face down tile you have in your defense row earns you one bonus point unless any of the following things are true. Number one, it's a two player game. No bonus points in two player games. Number two, it's your last tile. Your final tile is always played face up, even if it's a bonus play. And number three, your last tile is a wild tile. You earn no bonuses for using the wild tiles to go out. On the starter card, Battle in the Dojo, going out on a seven or eight will get you four points. A four, five, or six as your final play will get you three points, and a two or a three will only get you two points. Going out on a wild means you score nothing. You technically win the round, but you scored no points. This can be desirable because it could prevent another player from winning the whole game. With other scorecards, the scoring will be different. For example, in Battle in the Fog, your score is equal to the value of the tile that you use to go out. So if you go out on an eight, you earn eight points. Go out on a two, you only earn two points. Going out on a one is still an instant win though, even in that battle. That's it for Oink Games, Tiger and Dragon. Thanks again to Jim Zub for the loan of the game, and as always, I'm Steve Tassie, the board game guy, wishing you happy and healthy gaming.